because it is a full reverse grid. So Oliver Newton uh, will be starting from pole position and uh, he will have James Pepper for uh, company alongside him. Uh, then third position for Luke Armstrong, fourth place, Archie Flint uh, with Albert Henriksen and um, Adrian Rios Garcia on that third row of the grid. And then you have to go all the way back to 11th and 12th to uh, find the top two from the previous race with Levine Kishore, of course, starting just ahead of them. So this could be a particularly entertaining opening lap or so of racing. The red lights are on. Out they will go now. Our second race of the night underway here at Donington Park. A good start seemingly made there from Newton from uh, pole position. Newton's going to try and hold the lead as they head towards the first corner. Uh, Luke Armstrong there holding third place. He's on that inside line, the grey and purple car, but it looks as though it's going to be the pole sitter, is it? No, sweeping round the outside comes Archie Flint, trying to get the lead away, and he does so. Sorry, James Pepper that was, wasn't it? James Pepper into the lead. Fantastic stuff. Flint goes second, and Newton dropping down to third. There's William Antrobus up the inside uh, of Garcia, I think that is, for about sixth position. I say about because uh, they're all sort of chopping and changing places. They drop down the hill as contact, and that's the race one winner. Around goes Antrobus, but in the background, that looked like Kishore and Williams, both involved in some contact there's more drama exiting the old hairpin and i fear more carnage to be had yes around has gone dalton hayward henrickson bell is off the road too absolute carnage down at the old hairpin at the well halfway round not even halfway round the first lap of racing and that is what we feared really in the reverse grid race but big drama then for nathan williams really the first big drama for either of our two early championship rivals and uh, williams will have it all to do again now now where is uh, where do we see, uh, yeah, Robinson's third already. Look at that. George Robinson, third place already. So disaster that for Williams. And Robinson has a real opportunity now to try and get uh, something back from this. The safety car, though, has been scrambled. That's not a huge surprise, really. And that gives everyone a chance just to catch their breath, assess the damage. And, uh, more importantly, close back up on the safety car queue. Liam Bradley backing it into the chicane there. Doesn't really need to do that with the... Uh, safety car having been scrambled already. So Archie Flint then, somewhere in all of that, got the lead back as well from James Pepper. So we had, I think, three different leaders through the first half a lap there. Uh, with uh, Newton leading initially off pole. Pepper went around the outside of Redgate. Flint has now subsequently found himself into the lead. And uh, he would have been loving the opportunity to pull away there. But the safety car coming out means that's not going to happen. Again, sideways action there for Levine Kishore, who slips up the inside of Luke Armstrong, and we'll now have to give that back because there is a safety car out. Levine should give it back anyway because the uh, safety car is out. There you can see it, the Janetta G55, I think, although outwardly it looks almost identical to a 56, but I think it is a 55 uh, that Jordan Taylor is driving. This is a lot slower than Jordan's used to going, but uh, Jordan Taylor will gather them all up. Archie Flint, the first to close in behind him. James Pepper, second. Robinson, third. Kishaw, fourth. So Robinson and Kishaw both got through all of that without any drama. Oh, dear. And their message not getting through to Hayden Gray, who thankfully realises what's going on at the last second and uh, avoids contact with anybody. But I think Luke Armstrong needs to be back ahead of Levine Kishaw here. Kishaw definitely got past before uh, the line, but after the safety car had been scrambled, and as far as I understand it, you don't race back to the line. You race until the safety car is called for. So uh, we'll wait and see what comes of that. But there is George Robinson, undoubtedly the winner of that. Although Nathan Williams gets another chance now to... At least he's not lost too much ground. I didn't see who got into Nathan. Uh, I just saw him getting tagged sideways, going through the left-hand element of the crater curves. And uh, they have been Kishaw, but I don't want to apportion any blame until... I've had a chance to see it again, maybe afterwards, but... Uh, uh, Kishore, I think, is now letting... No, he's not. In fact, he's overtaking someone else now. Okay. I mean, Kishore... <laughs> uh, up into fourth place now. The safety car rules do apply to everybody equally. Levine, I don't see any reason why. Unless he feels that he was ahead of those two when the safety car was scrambled. Because we didn't cut to them straight away, did we, when that safety car uh, period was called for. So... Not entirely sure what's going on there, but Levine is going to take the restart in fourth place. Archie Flint is going to take it from the race lead, though, and that restart is coming at the end of this lap. The safety car lights are off. It is heading to the pit lane, and it means that Archie Flint now becomes the control car, and he will decide when he wants to accelerate and get the race back underway. Through the Melbourne hairpin, then. 
Is he going to accelerate nice and early? No, not yet. Still weaving, still hanging back, just biding his time. He's going to try and catch them off guard. Accelerate when they don't expect him to. Now he's gone. Look as they go into the uh, Goddard's hairpin, but that didn't really give him a massive advantage. And uh, James Pepper is going to go with him here, very much so, as is George Robinson in third place. This surely is a golden opportunity then uh, for George Robinson to strike back, get a race victory, and that's Nathan Williams around. Nathan Williams with a spin at the Goddard's hairpin before we even get the race restarted. What was that all about? You have to imagine that he didn't do that by himself. But again, we shall have to wait and see. The race is back underway, though. Further up the road, Levine Kishore there uh, sat in fourth position. And out wide goes James Pepper. That immediately allows George Robinson uh, to break through to second position. We're hearing it was contact with William Antrobus that sent uh, Nathan Williams around. So he is going to be very, very upset about that. And... Uh, well, again, we don't know who was to blame as such, only that there was a touch between the two of them. But Williams now is a long way back, even further back than he would have been, actually, before the safety car came out. That's Hayden Gray off the track at the old hairpin. Through goes Liam Bradley. Through goes the aforementioned William Antrobus into eighth position. Hayden Gray drops back into ninth place. Up at the front of the field, though, Nathan, uh, sorry, George Warrington about to attack for the race lead. Peaks to the inside at Coppice Corner. Archie Flint, though, hanging on valiantly for the time being, but he gets a bit of a rear end uh, slide going into Coppice Corner. Just carried a bit too much speed into the turn. Robinson sees his chance, pulls to the right hand side of the road. Now, on the national circuit, this would be the preferred line into the chicane, but we're turning left at the end of the straight, not right. And that might just save Archie, at least for the time being. Is he late enough on the brakes to hang on? Well, yes, he is. Nicely judged, actually, there to keep uh, Robinson at bay. And what Archie really needs to try and do is back. Robinson up into Pepper, into Kishore, into Louis Neal, who are all queuing up behind him. Here Kim comes uh, Kishore, actually having a big look up the inside of uh, Jay's Pepper, and he might get into the back of Robinson if he's not careful, just avoided the contact. Had to stand on the brakes and almost stop the car completely at the Melbourne hairpin and settled back in line in fourth position. Does get ahead of Louis Neal, but doesn't manage to get into third place. Meanwhile, Robinson again challenging to the outside line, into the Goddard's hairpin. Can he go right around the outside? There's a hip check there. Levine Kishore gets uh, shoveled out wide by Louis Neal, but look at the front of the field. George Robinson sweeps right around the outside of Archie Flynn, gets the lead away, and that was really good driving by both of them. Good, aggressive driving from Robinson to try the outside move and really sensible, gentlemanly driving driving from Flint to leave him the space. There goes James Pepper now, the inside for second position as well, although Pepper then gets sideways at the apex of Redgate Corner. Flint sees a gap on the left and tries to go back through into P2. Down through Hollywood, they will run then on the right as we look at it, Archie Flint on the left. James Pepper, Flint tries to commit. Pepper leaves him space again. Good to see that. Good racecraft between the two of them. And Flint actually sweeps back through on that outside line at the old hairpin. So Archie Flint back into second place. But, uh, the back, meanwhile, Levine Kishore there uh, battling with Luke Armstrong. So uh, Levine passed Luke, uh, seemingly behind the safety car earlier on, but he now finds himself back behind him again. Or specifically around the outside, all through McLean's. He finds the gravel trap that will slow the car down instantly and might allow Liam Bradley and William Andrews to get up the inside of him as well. In fact, no, Kishore keeps on coming around the outside of Armstrong. Uh, fair play there, Levine. Kept his foot in it. And manages to move back into fifth position. Contact though. Bradley goes around. Goes back into the road. And again. Again. Catches Nathan Williams. Who cannot buy a bit of good fortune in this race. Nathan Williams. What an unfortunate series of events really in this race. That has seen him for the third time. Involved in contact that wasn't his fault. And he finds himself right back towards the tail end of the field once again. So. Uh, well. Henriksen Bell continuing to battle. You've got uh, Dalton Haywood in this group as well. The green and yellow car. Dalton, remember, one of the fast drivers from the earlier race. As Henriksen Bell tries to slip up the inside of Hayden Gray. Who himself has a few stories to tell after this one. Oh, change for second. Jay's Pepper levering aside Archie Flint at the Melbourne hairpin. Corner at which he lost the lead a lap ago to George Robinson around the outside. This time loses a spot to Jay's Pepper on the inside. Luke Armstrong has gone around at that very same corner. But Archie Flint, again, displaying some good racecraft here, coming straight back at James Pepper. Doesn't want to leave Pepper uh, with an opportunity to get into the rhythm and pull away. Strikes straight back up the inside, but he overdoes it slightly. Runs wide on the exit. Pepper will go back through. And maybe Louis Neal as well. Neal had a solid run in that first race, didn't he, to fourth place. And he's now sat in the same position again. Putting together almost a George Robinson-esque uh, pair of races, really, that we saw from George last time at Alton. 
don't have to be winning races to be uh, scoring plenty of points. And Louis Neal fully aware that second place would be a good result here. He tries to get back into third, first of all, up alongside Archie Flint, heading through Schwantz curve. That gives him the inside line for McLean's. And Louis, I think, should be able to go through here. Or can Archie hang tough around the outside? He's going to try. And a great, great racing room left there. I mean, <laughs> I don't know where Levine Kishaw thinks he's going. Way wide over the grass again. And that time has to bail out of it. But really good racing between the two of them. Again, they are still side by side. And still leaving each other plenty of room as they come out of uh, Coppice. And look at that. Archie Flint deservedly, you have to say, into third position there. Really good racecraft. Uh, from both of them, he realised the outside line at McLean's was going to allow him a bit more momentum and therefore was able to clear uh, Louis Neal as they climbed uphill towards Coppice. Lee Mantrobus also trying to become a part of this fight, whilst for the third time in this race, uh, Nathan Williams tries to climb his way back up the order. That was 12th place that he just took away uh, from Liam Bradley, who himself has had some dramas already. Back to Hayden Gray now, who's coming under attack from... Well, Luke Armstrong and Dalton Hayward, who loops it coming out of the hairpin. Uh, Dalton, a bit too eager there to try to complete the manoeuvre. He got to the inside at the apex, but he knew he didn't want to get stuck on the outside at Goddard's. And uh, floored the throttle a bit too aggressively. Ends up pointing the wrong way, ends up dropping back behind Nathan Williams. So that's another place gained for Nathan. So back across the timing line towards Redgate Corner they go. Luke Armstrong then in eighth position. Is looking like he's getting away, uh, sorry, uh, not getting away from the two cars behind, although he might do now because Hayden Gray had um, Albert Henriksen up the inside. Albert has to leave that one go, and now that's Kishore around with Archie Flint, who does a good job of saving it, actually, but Levine Kishore has been in the wars in this race. He spins off the road, and that promotes, amongst others, William Antrobus. William Antrobus up into fourth place now, really benefiting from that. And uh, William Antrobus in the TNT eSports car, uh, managing to uh, to gain a place there. Similar livery to Levine, but uh, not teammates, I believe. And, uh, well, even so, Antrobus, the beneficiary there, moves into fourth. Flint down to fifth. Garcia up to sixth. Armstrong seventh. And Kishore rejoins all the way down in 13th place. You can just see him at the back of shot there behind Dalton Hayward, Liam Bradley, and Nathan Williams. So the greater curves have not been a... Happy hunting ground for a few of our Janetta Junior drivers in this race. A couple of major dramas. George Robinson, though, facing no dramas in this one, really. He just picked his way through the chaos, gets into the race lead. 7.2 seconds now his lead that he enjoys over James Pepper in second. Louis Neal is third. William Antrobus fourth. Archie Flint fifth. Garcia sixth. Armstrong seventh. Um, Gray in eighth. Henriks in ninth. And Williams in tenth position. So out of Melbourne goes Hayden Gray. Robert Henriksen right in behind. Is he going to have a little lunge into the Melbourne hairpin? No, Hayden has, I've noticed, actually been taking that defensive line quite a lot in this race. I think that's just his line, really, through Goddard's. Doesn't seem to lose him any exit speed, does it, going in tight? But they're all going to have a fired up uh, Nathan Williams back on their tail in a moment or two. You can see him, the black and white striped car in the background. Looming ever larger. Williams on the previous lap did... 53.6, so about two seconds quicker than this group of cars ahead of him. We know how quick he is. He's just not had the look. Well, maybe a bit of good fortune might be coming his way now because Albert Henriks and Bell nearly uh, made that overtake an awful lot easier for Williams. He's flashing the lights at him as they drop down through the crater curves. But uh, Henriks and Bell gathers it together, gets back on the road. <laughs> and uh, Nathan Williams in no mood to mess around now, is he? He wants to make this move as quickly as he can. We ride on board with the... Race 1 winner, the championship leader currently as well as a result of that. But this second race may well change that a little bit. Up ahead, look, there's a good battle going on. That's Hayden Gray back up the inside of Luke Armstrong, attempting to go up the inside of him anyway for 7th place. But Luke hangs on round the outside. Hendrickson defending in the background from Nathan Williams. Who tries the switchback, tries the wide entry into Coppice, but... He didn't really get on the power there. You can flash your headlights all you like, Nathan, but I think it's clear already that Albert's not going to put the indicator on and move out of the way. I have to try and do this the hard way, down towards the chicane. Six minutes of racing still to go. 
Nathan Williams desperate to try and regain some positions. Again, Henriksen sideways. I think he might have overheated those rear tyres. He tries to come over to defend, but also to avoid a grass-tracking Hayden Gray. And this might now allow Nathan Williams to gain two places in one. He's on the inside line. Into the hairpin he goes. Gets the car stopped. Rotates nicely at the apex. And that was the first bit of good fortune, really, that Nathan's had uh, all race long. As the two cars ahead both made small mistakes. And uh, almost waved him by, really. Aiden now going to try and get back up the inside of Henriksen. And, well, okay, that's one way of doing it. Henriksen is shoveled off onto the grass. I think that's definitely one for the clerk of the course to have a look at after the race. But uh, that was... Certainly a robust bit of driving from Hayden, who I had pointed out likes that early turning and the late braking into Goddard's, but to make sure you stop the car if you're getting up the inside of someone. Right, next target for Nathan Williams is Luke Armstrong. This is for seventh position. Grabs another gear as he drops down the hill. All over the back of Armstrong. Nowhere to go, though. Into the old hairpin. Armstrong defends the inside line. Now, that gives Williams a chance maybe to get the switch back on the exit. Look at that. Perfectly judged. Misses the back of Armstrong's car by a matter of inches. And he will switch straight back to the right-hand side of the road. Clears him before they get to Schwantz Curve. And Nathan Williams now sets off after Archie Flint. That is likely as good as it will get, though, for Nathan. Because Archie is then five seconds behind uh, Garcia in fifth position. I think even for Nathan Williams, that might be too much of an ask. Now, for second place, Louis Neal and uh, James Pepper. Louis Neal perhaps on to be uh, one of the best scorers of the night. And he's looking to the outside of James Pepper now as they head into the Fogarty S's. Late on the brakes, but not quite as late as Pepper. Who, in fairness, gets it stopped as well there on the inside line. But quicker off the turn is Louis Neal. Is there a gap on the inside? Just about. Pepper didn't quite get over to the inside far enough to cover. And so Louis Neal has a chance to break into second position here. Late on the brakes. He needs to get the car stopped, though. He snatches the inside brake, runs too wide, and Pepper will nip up the inside. Nice bit of driving there from James Pepper. And again, read that situation well. Realised, I think, that Louis was going in a bit hot, and as soon as Neil uh, snapped that inside brake, that was Pepper's opportunity to get the switch back. Oh, drama for Archie Flint there, stationary down at the Melbourne hairpin. Now, that had all the hallmarks, actually, of a hardware issue or a connection problem of some sort. Very strange place for the car to be stopped, and he should really have been able to carry on despite that. Back to the second place battle, though. Louis Neal and James Pepper, both of them actually have dis uh, displayed some really good racecraft tonight, and I think that Louis Neal is perhaps a candidate for driver of the round because of that. Some really clean driving. Certainly, I haven't seen anything untoward, and he's been uh, patient as well in his battle here with James Pepper. Sweeps past him as they head down through the crater curves, and Louis Neal does now make second place his own. Back from that little mistake at the uh, Melbourne hairpin earlier on. <laughs> James Pepper immediately jumps on the headlight flasher button as he tries to find a way back into the head, maybe, of Louis Neal and force a mistake out of him. Carries lots of speed through the turn, does James? In fairness, that might work. Well, actually, I think he was trying to avoid running into the back of uh, Louis there as they came off McLean's corner. So as they exit Coppice. Order stays the same. Andromus fourth has been caught by Garcia. You can just see in the background as well. So a couple of pairs of uh, battling teenagers to watch out for here. Louis Neal trying to hang on from Jordan Pepper, who's focusing all of his attention onto hitting the headlight flashing button and not necessarily enough on hitting the apex at the chicane because he had a bad run through the Fogarty S's. Drops a car length or so as they drop into the Melbourne hairpin. And uh, Louis Neal... Doesn't have to defend, therefore, onto the brakes. Andromus and Garcia continuing to run in the same order. Williams now up into sixth position, but he's still uh, nearly four seconds behind that pair. It's there, George Robinson is up the inside. Sorry, Bradley, that is, up the inside, I should say, of Hayden Gray. George Robinson sets the fastest lap. So far ahead is he that he's just crossed the line. Now, uh, did he cross the line with enough time to do another lap? I don't think so. I think this will be the final lap of the race. Just, just about, actually. Yeah, it might, might be touch and go, that. He might have got there in time to uh, squeeze two more laps out of this one. We'll wait and see. Bad news, if that's the case, for William Andromus, because that's even longer than he has to defend from Garcia. And it gives Nathan Williams another lap to try and close in on them with two laps of the race to go. He might have time to get there, the pace he's showing. Williams just put the fastest lap of the race in. 53.249. 
about a tenth quicker than the race leader is doing, but crucially, about 1.2 seconds quicker than these two did ahead of him. Oh, but he's pushing hard. Look in the background, all over the grass there was Williams coming down through the old hairpin where a brilliant battle pack arrives. Luke Armstrong just ahead of Liam Bradley, who's just ahead of Hayden Gray. And it's not that far back. It's Dalton Hayward and Albert Hendricks, and both of whom ran better than this uh, in race number one. Liam Bradley now getting up the inside of Luke Armstrong. Hayden Gray's got a grandstand view of all of this, but he'd rather not just be an interested observer. He'd like to get involved in the fight as well, and he might get his chance now. A wide line into Coppice Corner. Those two going side by side are going to delay each other. Look at the extra speed that Hayden can take off the corner as a result, but look at the extra speed that Dalton Hayward has taken off the corner in the wing mirrors. Dalton Hayward actually up alongside Hayden Gray as they drop down the straight and towards the Bogarty S's. Gray on the inside, Hayward on the outside, is he late enough on the break? Surely not, Hayden Gray, we know is last of the late breakers, and does indeed manage to fend him off. Across the line, meanwhile, with, yes, just about time for one more lap, goes George Robinson. He is in a league of his own in this race, 16 and a half seconds up the road. All of the action has been happening behind him, and there's more of that still occurring. Albert Henriksen here on the inside of Hayden Gray. You've got Dalton Hayward, who somehow ended up losing a place in all of that and uh, gets a bit sideways coming out of the Melbourne hairpin as well. Luke Armstrong and Liam Bradley ducking and diving as they debate seventh place. Bradley going to try the long way around at the Melbourne, at the uh, Goddard's hairpin. That was never really likely to work, but he does carry better speed off the turn. Oliver Newton in the background having a spin. You can see up at Coppice Corner, but we don't want to tear our eyes away from this battle just yet. They've actually got Levine Kishaw catching them as well. Levine Kishaw lapping uh, quicker than the group ahead. So there, Luke Armstrong defending from Liam Bradley, clips the curb, gets sideways. Meanwhile, this is Garcia at the inside of Antibus for fourth position. And if these two really start battling, Nathan Williams will be there. And they are battling out wide onto the grass goes Garcia. And Williams could still end up inside the top four here. Door banging off onto the grass goes Antibus. And that's definitely going to give Williams the run. He will clear Antibus. And he's going to have about half a lap to try and find a way past Garcia, who jinks to the inside to defend into McLean's corner. Hendrickson Bell has found himself in the gravel. That's down at the old hairpin, perhaps courtesy of Hayden Gray. We'll have to wait and see uh, if that uh, had anything to do with Hayden. But here is Nathan Williams again, tries that switch back, gets the overlap on the inside line, coming out of Coppice Corner, gets his nose ahead. Can he get his whole car ahead, though, as they head down the exhibition straight? He needs to, because they turn left at the end of it. There's still a, a tiny little bit of an overlap there for Garcia, who tries to come back at him, underbreaking into the chicane, but Williams turns into the corner aggressively and will recover to fourth position. And actually, Nathan Williams uh, putting in one of the drives of the night as well. Really, really uh, good racing here from Nathan, uh, but even better driving in a way for George Robinson because he claims a victory by 18.3 seconds. That is unheard of uh, in Ginetta Junior competition. Uh, George Robinson will be very, very pleased with that maximum points from the race. Well, not quite, actually, because uh, William stole the fastest lap earlier on. Louis Neal comes home in second place, though, and definitely has to be my candidate for driver of the round. Brilliant driving that from Louis. Third place, James Pepper. Fourth for the recovering three times, recovering uh, Nathan Williams. And it's a drag race for fourth, but it's William Andromus who just hangs on from Garcia. More drama at the final corner, though. That was Liam Bradley sideways. Luke Armstrong is going to come home in seventh. Bradley, I think will as a result of that beat Levine Kishore to the line uh, for eighth place and Kishore by 21 thousandths of a second manages to pit Hayden Gray uh, to finish in ninth place a bruising race that for Levine Kishore wasn't the only one in fairness to be involved in some drama but he certainly seemed to be at the center of a lot of it and finds himself uh, with a finishing position of a slightly disappointing ninth place so that was a bit more like it, really, wasn't it? Proper Ginetta Junior racing. A little bit of contact in uh, places, but uh, overall, just some really good side-by-side -side action. And uh, looking forward to hearing then uh, from our top three finishers in that one, uh, who I believe are slowly but surely making their way into the commentary box. And, well, George Robinson uh, manages to get the race victory. Exactly what he did last time out at Alton Park for George managing to... Uh, come second in the first race but then claiming the victory in race two and George got to be happy with that one a, a lot of that race uh, result though really stemming from the early laps where you just seem to manage to pick your way through the drama when others couldn't that must have been uh, pretty hairy though for a bit yeah it was the first two or three laps were all about keeping out of the chaos and then after that I got a bit lucky with the safety car putting me up to leaders um and then after that it was just getting past leaves and driving away 
it's difficult though to show patience, isn't it? Sometimes in that situation, when you, uh, you know, you're on the tail of the leaders, you know you've got the pace to win the race, but you've just got to kind of wait for that clear opportunity to make the move because it's so easy to end up making contact with drivers who maybe you're not that used to racing against. Yeah, I'd I'd much rather take second place than attempt for the lead and then have a massive crash and end up finishing twelfth or something like that. Uh, and of course, it was one of those races really for Nathan where he just couldn't seem to avoid the trouble. He did recover to fourth place, but you've got a few points back on him. How focused are you on Nathan in the early stage of the season? Because certainly it looks like you two are the early title favourites, but uh, are you just focusing on him? Are you just kind of going for race wins and letting the points sort themselves out? What's, what's your championship mentality at the moment? Uh, probably for the first couple of rounds, I'll just focus on myself and make sure I'm doing the best job. And then if it comes down to it in the final rounds, I'll focus on trying to make sure I score points over them. Sounds like a game plan then for George Robinson. George, congratulations. Really, really good drive from you tonight. Uh, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you. George Robinson then gets a race win here at Donington Park uh, to go along with his race two victory uh, from Alton a week ago. Now, a lot of the action was really happening some way behind him, about 18 seconds behind him, actually, uh, in what was a very entertaining fight for second place. It was Louis Neal who came out uh, on top in that one then with a second place finish. Louis, well done on that. Uh, some really good side-by-side -side racing you had with a number of people, including James, towards the uh, closing stages. Did you enjoy that? Oh, we're not hearing Louis at the moment. So let's try that again. Uh, Louis, can you uh, can you hear us uh, over there? I'll take that as a no. Okay, well, what we'll do, we'll leave Louis for the moment. We'll uh, come back to him in a few seconds. In the meantime, uh, we'll have a chat with our second place finisher, though, James Pepper, who does hopefully... Our third place finisher, sorry, uh, James Pepper, who does join us in the commentary box now. And James, same question to you, really, because we really enjoyed watching that battle that you had there with Louis. You fought as hard as you could to hang on, but in the end had to settle for, sec for a third. Yeah, it was uh, quite difficult. I saw, I think, Levine and Nathan battling behind. Just sort of hoping they'd sort of bring a gap. Um, Louis was always going to get the better, quicker driver. Uh, he deserves second, but I think I could have had him a bit of um, bit of oversteer coming out of the hairpin. But other than that, cast for more. Yeah, absolutely. A really solid race. And you always learn a lot more, don't you, when you can have a clean race and uh, sort of really engage in some good side-by-side -side racing because racecraft is so important in a category like uh, like Janetta Junior. So do you feel like you are now starting to learn and, and gain in confidence with every race that goes by? Yeah, definitely. The uh, the car's got its challenges, um, <laughs> quite difficult at times, but yeah, the side-by-side -side action gives the race craft and shows it quite well on the drivers. Yeah, definitely. Some of the cleanest racing we saw came from you two uh, up towards the sharp end. Your thoughts for uh, for next week then? A, a new challenge, of course. We move on from uh, Donington Park, and I'm sure you'll be looking to try and build on this now. You've got that first podium, uh, and I'm sure the next target realistically is a race win. How likely do you think uh, are we to see you on the top step of the podium in the next few rounds? Well, I um, would we'll definitely like to get, get back up on the podium again, but at the end of the day, it's just trying to keep away from the incidents and then getting quicker than George, uh, Louis and Nathan. Which is not going to be easy to do, but uh, James, we wish you the very best of uh, luck with that. We'll see you again next week and uh, great to have a new name on the podium. Well done.